Okay, on this example, we're trying to find the area between this curve, 1 over x, and the x-axis. But it's also being bounded by x values of 1 and 5. So that's important to know as we get going on this. How we're going to do it is we're going to set up Riemann sums for this problem. All right, we're going to look at left-hand endpoints and right-hand endpoints. Um, so those graphs are drawn down below for us. As you can see, we're going between 1 and 5 for our x values. This is the piece of the 1 over x graph that we care about. And with left-hand endpoints, as we calculate the area of these rectangles, what's going to happen is we're going to get an overestimation because we're counting into our total some areas of rectangles that are above the graph. On right-hand endpoints, what you do is you draw them up from the right-hand side to the graph and over to whatever your next uh, x value is. Um, but on these, we're going to get underestimations. You see there's a gap in between uh, the top of our rectangles and the curve. All right, so let's get going on this. As we do it, I'm going to first do left-hand endpoints. So that first rectangle, we drew up from 1, the very left-hand endpoint, up to the graph. So as we calculate that, it's 1 over 1 getting plugged into the function, right? The function was 1 over x, so we replace the x with a 1 in the denominator. And then we would multiply this by 1 because the base of our rectangle is 1 unit wide. All right, so in this case, that area of the rectangle works out to be 1 times 1 is 1. But then we had more rectangles we have to compute. So the next one is when we plug a 2 in, up gets up to the graph, and as you plug it in, that's going to be 1 half for the height of that rectangle. Right? You can use the function, replace the x in the function with a 2. In our case, that's going to be a 1 for the width of that rectangle because all of our rectangles are even. Now we chose four rectangles on this. If you were told to choose eight, that next value, instead of plugging a 2 in, would be 1 and a half. You divide your region up right four units from one to five you divide it up evenly so the next computation here we're adding one half so the area here is one half the area for that first rectangle was one the next one I think you're getting a pattern perhaps but we're gonna plug in the three one-third one for the width of that rectangle so one for a width one-third for the height of that rectangle, multiplies together and gives us one-third. We have one more rectangle, and I know this is a little bit tedious, but we're going to plug in the four. The width of that rectangle is going to be one, so plus one-fourth. All right, if we add all these together, and we could, but it's going to be a little bit cumbersome because we'd have to get a common denominator in this case. And I believe the common denominator works out to be 60. Nope, it works out to be 12. This all adds together for our left-hand endpoints to be 25 twelfths. All right, I'm not going to show you the work on that. I'll leave that to you. All right, for right-hand endpoints, to get this moving along, we're going to plug in the right-hand side. So start over here at the 5. Gets plugged in. You want to know the height here, so you're going to plug it into the function. So we get 1 fifth. The width of that rectangle is 1, but it only has a height of 1 fifth, so the area is going to be 1 fifth plus the next rectangle. Plug in a 4 into the function. The height is going to be 1 fourth in this case. Width of that rectangle is 1, so that's 1 fourth for the area of that rectangle. 1 third comes next, times 1. All right, so this rectangle has 1 third. This one had 1 fourth, and this one had 1 fifth for their areas. But we have one more rectangle to go. That's when we plug in the 2. So 1 half times 1 is going to work out to be 1 half. All right. And this is where our denominator, common denominator, would be 60. In this case, they all add together to be 77 sixtieths. I'm not showing the work to get the common denominator and everything. All right. So it's somewhere in between these two, I guess you could say. Well, what are these approximately? All right, the area under there, I believe, is going to be somewhere between 25 twelfths is 2.08. That was an overestimation, remember. And over here, 77 sixtieths is going to be 1.28, approximately. All right, so 
Could we get a better estimate, I guess is maybe a good question. It's got to be somewhere in between these two. So one way to do this is actually um, go ahead and find an average, right? Get a better estimate by finding the average of these two. So that would work out to be 25 twelfths plus 77 sixtieths, all divided by 2. All right, that works out to be exactly 101 over 60 which is approximately 1.68. All right, so that would be the best estimate possible on this as one gave an overestimation, one gave an underestimation for how we're doing these. All right, hope this helps out. I'm sorry to leave out a few of the details as far as um, getting common denominators and combining fractions together, all that good stuff, but uh, I have confidence in you.